wonder if you could turn in your Bibles to the book of Nehemiah in chapter 8. In this term, we're focusing on joy and how joy is fuel for us to go, to go and be an influence, to go and reach those who don't yet know the Lord. And uh, this morning, our focus is on the power of a joy-fueled life, the power of a joy-fueled life. Life. If we have joy within us, it enables us to be more joyful in sharing with others. There's a different dynamic and a different energy in being the light of the world if we have joy within us. And part of the question is, what is the source of that joy? What is the source of that joy? The source of the joy, of course, is the Lord himself. That joy that we get from him is also the source of the power for us to be the light. In Nehemiah in chapter 8, the people of Israel are looking at restoring the ways of the Lord in Israel. And there's a celebration. You can read about the celebration here. In verse 10, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. Sounds a bit like a bribe. Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. And send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And so as we talk about the power of a joy-fueled life, where does that power come from? It comes from the fact that our God is full of joy, and because He is, that strengthens us. It's the joy of the Lord that strengthens us. This God that we serve is amazing. He is the source of all things and is joyful. Always has been, always will be. It's wonderful to live in a universe where he who made the universe is full of joy. It's why we laugh at jokes, isn't it? Because we are made by him. We enjoy things that are fun and funny. It's his nature to be joyful. And so we live in a joyful universe. If you read through the scriptures, you will find many places where it talks about the created things crying out, the stones even crying out. It says in Isaiah 55, the mountains and the hills will burst into song before you and the trees of the field will clap their hands. We're living in a universe made by a joyful God. It's a joyful universe. Our God enjoys celebration, don't you think? He's a God who enjoys celebration. We celebrated Him here this morning. We danced together. But it's the very nature of our God to be joyful, and He has created a joyful universe like to just review what is joy. I found a definition in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defining joy, and we're talking this morning about the joy of the Lord. What is joy? Joy is a lasting sense of well-being. A lasting sense of well-being. Now, I'm sure at some stage or other you have felt as if things are going well. Is that right? At some stages it just really feels like things are going well. But joy is a lasting sense of well-being. And our God is the ancient of days. 
He always has had a sense of well-being, and he always will have a sense of well-being. A lasting sense of well-being. Another aspect of joy is the prospect of possessing what one desires. The prospect of possessing what one desires. And of course, our God looks forward to the prospect of you and I being with him forever. It's the reason he made the universe. So our God is lastingly joyful. Why is he joyful? This lasting sense of well-being. Firstly, he is love, the scripture says in 1 John. He is love. And what is love? Love is desiring the best for the other. No wonder he's joyful because he's love and he desires the best for all of us. And not only does he desire the best, he's able to deliver the best. He has the power to deliver the best. If we'll just cooperate with him with that free will, he will deliver the best. As we've given up living for ourselves and we live for him, every year is full of rich things in God, a rich sense of satisfaction. And so why is he joyful? He is love, desiring the best for everyone always, always. He is love. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Secondly, he enjoys what he has created. Our God is a good God. Whatever he makes is good. It says that in Genesis chapter 1, as he was creating, he made this and it was good. He made that and it was good. And when he'd finished, he looked and he saw that it was very good. And so he celebrates the creation, the work of his hands. And you and I are the workmanship of his hands. He enjoys what he's created. Thirdly, why is he joyful? Because he is love and love never fails. It always overcomes. We're sitting in a prayer meeting at one stage back in the 1970s. And the leader of the charismatic prayer group cried out, God, why are you so powerful? And in a split second, three people stood up and began reading from 1 Corinthians 13. He is so powerful because he's love. He's love. And love never fails. Our God is joyful because he is love and it never fails. He's not threatened. Do you think God is threatened by anything? When the enemy tried to rebel and take over the throne, do you think God was threatened? The devil in his pride thought, I'll capture the authority of Adam, use my own authority, and I'll take over the throne and run this universe my way. He was in pride, therefore he was deceived. He thought he could do it. But it's a joke. It's a little bit like an ant saying to an elephant, I'll crush you, I'll get you. And so when the enemy did that, I think God said, oh, Lucifer, 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 how you have fallen. Lucifer, I'm not even gonna handle your rebellion. Lucifer, I'm going to put a war between you and the woman, between her offspring and yours, and the woman and the offspring will crush your head. God is not at war. It would be unfair on whoever he was fighting. He's at rest. And so he's not threatened he knows what he's done and he knows he has the ability to deliver the fullness of his plan. And so he's full of joy. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. 
So why is he joyful? Because he's love, wants the best for all, always. He enjoys what he's created, and he is love, which never, never, never fails. He's not threatened. I want to talk about some reasons why he's joyful to do with the prospect of possessing what he desires. Our God is a creator, isn't he? He creates. Our God is a redeemer. He's come to redeem us, hasn't he? Our God is a king who rules. But although these are things he does, creates, redeems, and rules. He is in his heart, first, a father. He's a father who created you and I to be born and get to know him on this earth and with a free will choice come into his family. The reason he created is because he's first a father. When he came in the person of Jesus to redeem us, he came because he's a father who wants his children back with him. And when he rules, he rules his household to make us more and more like daddy, more and more like father. And so he calls us to relate to him in truth. He tells us this is how to talk to me. Jesus says, this is how you should pray. Our creator, mm -mm, doesn't sound right. Our redeemer, mm -mm, doesn't sound right. Our king, mm, doesn't sound right. This is how you should pray. Our father. Because he's a father. He's a father. That's why he created the universe so you and I could be born and then born again into his family and be his sons and daughters forever. Ah. So he's first a father, and he has redeemed his family for the joy set before him. Hebrews 12 and verse 2 says of Jesus, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy? The joy of you and I being brothers and sisters to Jesus. The joy of you and I being sons and daughters of the living God. That was the joy set before him. And so is our God joyful? Yes, because he has the prospect of possessing that which he desires, you and me as his sons and daughters. Full of joy. He's joyful also because he has overcome the world system for us. The scripture says in John 16, 33, in this world you'll face much trouble, but I have overcome the world. Whatever difficulty you're facing, it's short term. It may be for two months or 20 years, but it will come to an end. And we will be with him forever. And so he has overcome the world. And he's also working all things together for good on our behalf. He's a loving father. He doesn't leave us out there. He's overcome the world on our behalf. And he's working all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Whatever bad things have happened to you, he's going to turn them or he's busy turning them. And so our God is joyful because he desires us. He looks forward to being with us. The source of the power we have is the fact that his joy is our strength. And his joy is about you. The Lord delights in you and I, doesn't he? Do you know that, that he delights in you? A couple of scriptures, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. It says, he will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and rejoice over you with singing. Is that how you know God? That he quiets you with his love? 
that he rejoices over you with singing? Do you sometimes hear him singing over you when you're quiet with him? Because you're his son, you're his daughter. He made you the way he likes you and he's enjoying you. You say, but I've messed up here and I messed up there. Yes, so? If your parents, do your kids sometimes mess up? Do you still love them? Little kid's trying to learn to walk and he falls and hits his head. Does the father say, see, I told you, now stand up and do it again. No. The Lord loves us even in our struggles. Because all of us have some struggles, don't we? He delights in us. Psalm 149, verse 4, says, The Lord takes delight in his people. Isaiah 65, verse 19, I will take delight in my people. Isaiah 62, verse 4, The Lord will take delight in you. Oh, we're living in a universe made by a father, created the universe so we could be born, get to know him, become his sons and daughters. And it's happening. And so he's full of joy. He delights in you and me. If you have a Bible here with your iPad or your cell phone or a book, would you turn with me to Revelation 21? Let's just read a few verses in Revelation 21. Settling that our God's joy is our strength. He's always joyful. Always joyful. He has a lasting sense of well-being. And he has the prospect of possessing what he desires. He knows you and I are going to be with him forever. This is the end of the story in Revelation 21, verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men. Notice God's going to be with us because that's what he wants. He wants to be with us, with his sons and daughters. Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. This is what he looks forward to, to being with us. He wants to be with us in everything we do today. As we work together with him, play together, whatever we do, he wants to do it with us. But the time is coming when it will be face to face. Goes on to say at that time when he's with us, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And so... Our God wants to be with you, with me, today, in everything we do. Play with us, work with us, whatever we're doing, He wants us to be with Him. Because that's what He's like. And His joy, His joy is in being with us. The joy of the Lord is your strength. There's a picture coming up now, which is a celebration full of color. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Lord has a lasting, ancient of days sense of well-being. He likes you. And he's working all things together for good for you. It's the joy of the Lord that's our strength. His plan is coming to pass. That you and I, as his kids, will be with him. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about receiving joy-generated power from the Lord. The Lord wants us to receive joy-generated power. He's arranged for us to be connected to Him. If the joy of the Lord is our strength, we want to be connected to Him, to that joy, so we can be strong. And he's arranged for us to be connected.
connected. Firstly, as we are born again, he places us in his body. He is the head, Jesus. We're his body and we're one with him. We're connected. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, it says we will be seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You and I are in Christ today if we're born again, connected to him. And therefore, there should be a natural flow of joy from that. Then, the scripture says in Colossians 1.27, Christ is in us, the hope of glory. Not only are we in him, in his body, he's living in us. And that's our hope of change becoming more and more like God. And so there's a connection again. We're connected to God in the body, and we're connected because He lives in us. Not only are we people in whom God has come to live, Christ in us, the hope of glory, we are His sons and daughters. Romans 8.14 says, those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God, the daughters of God. And so there's a connection. That connection enables us to have the strength of his joy because we're connected. And finally, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, it says we are partakers or participators in the divine nature. Because we are one with Christ, we are partakers or participators in the divine nature. We're connected to him who is thoroughly always joyful. Because we are connected to him, we can display his wisdom as we go out and live among the people. Because we are connected to him who is joyful, we have strength to go and display his wisdom. In James chapter 3, verse 17, it says, the wisdom of God is first of all pure, pure in motive, pure in lifestyle, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And because we are connected, we can live that way in the world around us. The joy of the Lord fuels us through our connection to be able to demonstrate His wisdom. Because we are part of the body of Christ, we're connected to Jesus. And Jesus has won the victory as the Lamb of God. He allowed himself to be slain. And if you read the book of Revelation, you find that he who sits on the throne is the Lamb of God. He's also the Lion of the tribe of Judah, but it's the Lamb who won the victory. Everyone was surprised when Jesus was crucified, everybody thought it was the end, and then he rose again. Scripture says that Jesus sent them out like lambs among wolves. We go out in the spirit of the lamb into the world, and we reach out to people through kindness, through love. Reach out to them. We don't go out and force them and coerce them and manipulate them. We go in the spirit of the Lamb because we're connected to the Lamb. We're connected to the Lamb. And so as we live this joy-fueled life, we're called to respond from the Spirit within us, not to react from our own personal experience. If someone insults us, our natural response is to insult them back. But we're not called to be natural, we're called to be supernatural. The Holy Spirit lives in us, so when someone insults us, we're called to bless them. We're called to overcome the evil with good, not to respond to evil with evil, but when people do wrong to us, we're supposed to come back and bless them. Just like when they were crucifying Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They didn't realize that what they were doing would be the source of their very salvation. 
We're called to be like Him because we're connected to Him. Connected to Him. And so how should we live in real power? How do we live in this sense of well-being, the joy of the Lord being our strength? It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, be joyful always. <laughs> Irrespective of circumstance, if things are going bad at work, be joyful. If there are challenges in the family, be joyful. Because God's in control. And we're connected to Him. And we will overcome in His pattern and His way. One of the ways we can be joyful is that when we face difficulty is we just get quiet with Him, who is the Lord of all. And we begin to count our blessings. Count the good things that He's done for us. No matter how difficult it is, when we start counting the blessings of the good He's done, something settles. Isn't that true? You found that? Something settles. Be joyful always, it says. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Philippians chapter 4. Paul brings the same message. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Irrespective of circumstances, God's people are the light of the world. They should rejoice always. I will say it again, says Paul, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't be troubled about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Why to God? Because nothing can threaten him. He's able to deliver. Just ask the Lord. Present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So rejoice in the Lord always. He's joyful. We get our strength from the fact that he's in control. Nothing threatens him, and he wants to be with us, and he wants to do the good things for us. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, The fruit of the Spirit who lives in us is joy. And so that's there. We can live in real power. The prospect of possessing what one desires. This is eternal life already we're living. To know the one true God, the Father, and Jesus Christ whom he sent. We can already do, and we are doing today. We can already experience that today. He wants us to be with him. When he returns and takes us to be with him, we go into ages that are yet to come with him. What a blessing. What a blessing. And there's a wonderful promise that the meek shall inherit the earth. Those who have the spirit of the Lamb are going to inherit the earth. Not those who are manipulating, dominating, forcing, but those who invite and lead in the way of the Holy Spirit. Those will inherit the earth. And so the power of the joy-fueled life comes from the fact that the joy of the Lord is our strength. He is not threatened at all. He looks forward to being with us in everything we do. And he's ready this morning to do something for us as his children. I wonder this morning, are there things in your life where you know you should have victory, but you don't? Perhaps something that you know you should do, but you struggle to do it. Or something you know you shouldn't do, but you keep doing it. And it's quite possible that there is a demonic spirit affecting you. Derek Prince, a powerful Bible teacher, was quiet with the Lord one day, and the Lord said, Derek, you have a demon. I said, Lord, what demon do I have? You have the demon of procrastination. Tell it to go. Now, I don't know. What is there in your life that you need? Know you should have the victory, but you don't. An area where you know you should do something, but you never do it. 
or something you know you should stop, but you struggle to stop. It could be anything. It could be sadness, heaviness. It could be an eating disorder. It could be something to do with drugs. It could be just a sense of being quenched. Anybody like to be prayed for? The Father is here by the power of the Spirit through what Jesus has done to set his children free. He doesn't want them living in that any longer. If you need prayer, why don't you stand and let's pray. Anything at all. Now we're going to pray together. Invite you to open your eyes and want to be free. That's your job, faith. We are free by faith, not by feeling. Is that okay? And so won't you look at me and just want to be free. If you're listening at home by radio, I invite you just to keep your eyes open and just say after me as I'm about to lead everyone. Would you say after me, forgive me, Lord, for those things I'm standing for. I wish I hadn't done it. Or I wish I had done what I was supposed to. Please forgive me. And I thank you that you do. I want to be free, Lord. And so I bind any strong man affecting my life. I command any demonic spirit that is binding me. I command you to go in Jesus' name. All right. Why don't you just look at me and want to be free? I'm going to pray up against certain spirits. I bind any strong man affecting any of God's people standing here or listening by radio. I command any spirits affecting the bodies of God's people to go. Pain, tension, sickness, disease, slumbering spirits that would cause God's people to fall asleep reading the Bible. I command you to go. Spirit of death, get out in Jesus' name. You have to go. Those spirits affecting the emotions of God's people. Spirits of fear, get out in Jesus' name. Fear of the future, fear of failure, get out. Fear of water, fear of spiders, fear of confined spaces, claustrophobia, leave in Jesus' name. Fear of blood, get out in the name of Jesus. Sadness, I command you to go. Quench spirit, leave in the name of Jesus. Spirit of inadequacy, come out in Jesus' name. You have to go. Leave in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of religion, I command you to go. Get out in Jesus' name. Those spirits affecting the minds of God's people, mind-binding spirits, get out in Jesus' name. Procrastination, get out in the name of Jesus. You have to go. Leave in Jesus' name. I command you to go. Anything to do with anger, I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Anything to do with eating disorders, overeating, anorexia, bulimia, get out in the name of Jesus. Every last one of you leave. Get out in Jesus' name. Those affecting the will of God's people, I command those spirits to go. Spirits of passivity and rebellion, get out in Jesus' name. Stubbornness, leave in the name of Jesus. Spirits of manipulation that are working through other people to manipulate God's children, I break your power and command you to go in Jesus' name. Manipulation, domination, intimidation, Jezebel spirits, get out in Jesus' name. Spirits moving through God's people to manipulate others, I command those spirits to go. Those spirits of manipulation, domination, control, get out in Jesus' name, you have to go. Keep moving, get out in Jesus' name. Anything to do with lust, get out. Fantasy lust, leave in Jesus' name. You have to go. Come out in the name of Jesus. Leave in Jesus' name. You can no longer affect God's people. I command you to go. Any other spirits that I haven't addressed, I don't care who you are, what your names are, I command you to leave now. Foul spirits, get out. Every last one of you leave in Jesus' name. You can't hide or deceive. Lying spirits, deceiving spirits, get out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you say after me, strong man, I loose you. In Jesus' name. Leave now. In Jesus' name. All right, just keep your, keep your eyes forward. All right. Strong men, you're gone. I command you to leave. Get out in Jesus' name. No more place for you. Hallelujah. How many are sensing freedom? Can I see some hands? Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Let's just invite the Lord to come and fill us anew with his spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the wonder of your resurrection power setting your people free today. We invite you to come now by your Holy Spirit and fill your children, your sons and your daughters anew. Fill them, Lord, from the soles of their feet to the top of their head with your Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Fill us anew. Fill us anew. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's begin to pray in the Spirit. Let's keep praying in the Spirit. Can I invite you to take your seats as you pray in the Spirit? If you're sick this morning, as we're praying in the Spirit, won't you stand? Anybody needing a touch of the Lord on your body? We have joy-fueled power. So I wonder if you are a believer, won't you lay hands on those that are close to you that are standing? Just lay hands on them. Your job laying hands on them is to believe. The scripture says those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, we now in response to your word lay hands on those our brothers and sisters who are not well. We ask, Lord, for your power to go through their bodies. I pray in particular for persistent sicknesses that refuse to go. Go now in Jesus' name. Come, Lord, in your power. Heal your people. And we say to each person standing, be healed because of what our God has done for you. Be healed in that power. Feel the joy that comes as he touches your body because he likes you. He wants to be with you. Be healed in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. How many sense something as we pray? Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand.